I'm a giant when I stand Ballin' like the Jets, start in Jersey like the Nets To New York like the Mets, yeah I win like the Yanks Like the past, fill a check, TNT, sports talk How to show on the net, yeah On myself, yeah I bet, yeah I put blood to the switch, yeah From the east to the west, TNT, sports talk How to show on the net, yeah gonna have to figure out something else i'm not sure exactly how they're gonna do it i'm not sure like what the perfect plan is but hopefully within the next two weeks i would say we gotta figure this out i'm sure you agree it's a decent timeline right yeah i mean the clock isn't our friend the calendar isn't our friend we've got less than a month to figure this out um and every day that passes without some type of step forward is a step back so I don't know. We're against the clock. We're against the calendar. I would say that we have until the end of the month, like maybe the first week of June to figure something out and announce something. And if the owners started at 50, 50 split and they said that was a non-starter, they said that that wasn't, that wasn't even kind of considered by the MLBPA, then we've got a little bit of ways to go and they have to make up that ways in the next couple of weeks. Now, like that proposal was submitted on Monday. Here we are tomorrow's Friday. We just smoked another week. Yeah, it's, it's the type of thing. I think I said glitter of hope. I think the phrase is glimmer of hope. Like I'm looking for, as a baseball fan, all of us, we're looking for anything that tells us this is going to return to games being played. Any glimmer of hope, just please put it out there. Even if we're not all the way there yet, like keep the energy positive. Let's keep moving in the right direction. I don't want to see us take a step back because this week even we took a step forward. When players start tweeting and then you got Mark to share a chiming in. I'm like, ah, we're taking a step back here. Yeah, I don't like any of that stuff either. It's getting a little too much talking right now. Like, we just need to buckle down and get this thing done. We don't need everyone's opinion right. on it at this um, point. The only people's opinions that matter are the owners, the players, and the people inside the meetings and talks that are going on. And like these reporters, whatever they can get out of it, that's positive, share it with us. But we don't need to hear everything step by step. Uh, I have faith that it's going to happen. I have faith that it, it's, it's going to work out because, like I said, there's more people that want it to happen than don't. It isn't the type of thing where people are like, no, 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 we don't want this. I want to say it's, it's, it's a majority of people involved in baseball that work in baseball, players, whatever, want to see the season come back. They don't want to see a season lost so they'll figure out a way to get it done and it's going to come down to the buzzer it's going to come down to the last like minutes that it, that it can happen where we might not know until june and then there's there's a week's notice and they're like players have to be in their training camps or uh, at their stadiums for spring training too a, a week from today it's confirmed yeah that's what we're waiting for even if it's like late may if it takes time we're ready whenever i mean if they pass that first week of june i can't see it happening because it's just too much time and then there's not enough time to prepare for it and then it just won't be worth it so i think that's a good timeline like you said what do you think about the health and safety concerns you think they'll be able to clear all those hurdles because that's a big question as well yeah uh, i i just saw a bleacher report notification come up where it said MLB won't be shut down if a player tests positive with coronavirus. Now, you have to consider that because how drastic the NBA made their move as soon as the first player contract, like they shut everything down. And I think that was 100% the right decision that sent shockwaves through the world. That made everyone take this thing seriously. But as we restart, contracts the virus, they should be removed. They should be quarantined. Test everyone else. If everyone else is good, you keep going. You can't shut the whole league down because of one player, and you can't make it bigger than it is. With this reopening no, or restarting, well, like, I agree yeah, we, we, we can't let it hinge on one positive test. They said these tests aren't even accurate, you know? Yeah, and I, I said that too. I was like, it's basically, this was inevitable. Like, you can't, you can't just think that no one's going to test positive. Like, you have to continue. Like, you know, that's just how it has to be. Right. Yeah, these guys are, so, I mean. Um, no, I'm sorry, Keith, go right ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't know if you guys, I was going to say, these guys, these guys will be tested beforehand. They're young, they're athletic, they can beat the virus. These guys aren't worried about getting coronavirus. These guys aren't. They're not going out there with the threat of, oh, I might get coronavirus and die. So 
if one of the players contracts a virus, just pull that one player and let everything keep going. Um, and I think that's how everyone's planning on proceeding. I agree too. I think that's a very good opinion. I, um, personally, if somebody tests positive, you don't need to shut it down. Just remove him, test everybody who was around him, make sure everybody's okay. That's, I agree as well. But, uh, Keith, I will tell you, Julian and I have been very adamant about this, about the season. Of course, we want baseball no matter what. But me personally, I've advocated that I feel like I wish that we could get 100 games. Do you feel like because we're not getting 100 games, do you feel like this season is a little bit like unorthodox? I mean, it's definitely unorthodox. But do you feel – do you wish in a way that we could get 100 games other than 82? Yeah, man. Uh, when this first happened – People were doing over under how many games do you think? Right. And my over under, I said at a hundred. I'm like, we're go- we should be we should be shooting for a hundred game season. If right. it's 80, 82, like fine, it sucks uh, because we're we're Yankee fans. We're in our championship window. We're looking at this season like, okay, whatever tournament comes, whatever style um, baseball we get, if the Yankees win that. People are going to look at that with, uh, you know, not the same merit as a real World Series. I even was on Twitter saying, whatever this thing is, you can't call it a World Series unless it's like at least like 100 games. Like once we get to an 82 game season with 14 playoff teams, whatever they win at the end of the year should not be considered a World Series win. It's not the World Series. It's like they didn't do what you have to do to get to a World Series. Um I think if, if, if they can figure out some type of half a season for July, 82 games, um, I, I think that'll be cool. But I, I don't think you can call it a World Series. And you can't expect everyone to hold it with the same weight as a World Series. Now, when you look at the Houston Astros, they still have asterisk behind their World Series, but they still have a World Series. So <laughs> we're living in a time where, you know, we're living in a time where it's like, which one would you rather have, uh, a, a asterisk, um, Astros cheating World Series or a pandemic shortened season fair and square world series I, i'd take that fair and square world this yeah. is in the middle of may right now we would have been at the stadium so many times it's oh, not even funny. Me, I, he would have been us, there every day almost. oh absolutely yeah, absolutely <laughs> i mean i want to start going to a lot more games than i did last year meet a lot of people who you guys you and julian know who i don't know yet it's just i feel like in a way like and corona robbed us is robbing us of all this, all the great things that are to come. And it's just, it's hard to take it nowadays. It really is. It's crazy. Yeah. I thank God for last year, the last few years, because I was able to go to the stadium a lot because I, we did have good teams. We were competitive. We did win a lot of games. Right. You know, we just had back to back hundred win seasons. And I was at, I don't know, I was at probably like 60 of the games in the last two years. So uh, I thank God for that, but but yeah, you're right. It sucks as a fan, right? Like as kids, as a as a kid growing up, I didn't get to go to the stadium. So now as an adult, I go to the stadium and I and I take in everything I can, and I don't miss too many home stands, and I enjoy it. And now we're kind of getting robbed of that, dude. It's it's the type of thing where I have spiraled down these like dark like depths of my mind of like, oh no, what if this season doesn't happen? Right. And this I've is been the there Yankees. Too championship window and yeah and I'm like what if what if they lock out next year and what if like, like I just started getting into this deal. like what if baseball what if this ruins baseball and you can't recover I, I don't even it's not it's not it's not good thoughts for the podcast no, it's not, but, but we've had them too and with the CBA in 2021 it's very relevant and someone was trying to tell me that they think the business aspects will figure itself out and they can still recover but I'm not 100% sure about that I mean I just if we don't play this year I don't know how they're gonna recover from this like even if it's a sport in their 82 games or with the weird 14 like no baseball I mean some baseball is better than no baseball there we go yeah and I mean it was just Mother's Day, right? And I made the joke with them is that the game's on, and they're like, there's no games. And I'm like, yeah, I like you guys are laughing, but like, I'm kind of like, I've done that crying. so many times. Like, my dad was like, turn the game on. I was like, what game? Like, like, when it first started, he's like, oh, wow, wait, there's nothing. It's wild. It's been a wild two months, man. I never expected this. I never in my wildest dreams that I think a virus could shut 
the country down, the world everything, down. Literally everything. I'm such a sports fan and a sports head. Like I, my life, I just roll into seasons. You know, Bobby, I just roll in. The year starts. We're in basketball season. Spring training comes. It's baseball, baseball, baseball. August comes. We're about to go into training camp. Kick off football. We go through a football season. Then, you know, right, right again, it's basketball. Like, I just, my, that's my life yeah, every year. You, and bro. this is the what, first what year doing? of my life I mean, where it's I'm like, like baseball and football are rotating because I'm not as into basketball because the Knicks are really bad. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I've been getting, I was getting into Rangers a little bit because they were playing well and I've always liked them. So that was cool for a little while. But yeah, me and Bobby are the same way. It's always baseball season, it's always football season. Like, that's just how our mentalities are. We do the yep. podcast, do all these videos and stuff. That's just what we're about. It What's just, our life? It just hurts to not have it. And we never thought this was possible. Like, this is our worst nightmare. And it's kind of, we're playing, it's, we're playing right in front of our eyes. Yeah. And it's, there's, there's, levels to this nightmare it's one thing to fight the virus it's another thing with the business side of it you know like that's where the nightmare really starts to snowball i saw someone tweet something out today and i, and I was like yo this is doomsday like the, like the negative scenario for us is like literally like this is happening when we have one of our best teams we just paid for the highest paid pitcher in the league the best arm in the league and we yeah, can't even yeah. use them yeah the only thing i'll say is that it helps us with the injuries because we're getting some guys healthy yes. Aaron Judge is a whole fiasco I don't know what's going on with that apparently he doesn't need surgery but they don't know when he'll be ready it's just a big mess and I think Stan and Paxton will be good to go Hicks might be close but they might not want to rush it so that's one positive for us but if we lose the whole season we lose a prime year of Cole after giving him all that money that's just horrible yeah like this is really going to be at the chase for 28 like finally after yeah. the tech game like this was really the year we were supposed to win it we we're talking all these other years but this year really is it I agree. Yeah, man. And you said it like to try and br like bring some positive energy into this thing, the silver lining, right? Boone said a bunch of these guys are getting healthy. Like Paxton's throwing bullpens. We were all freaking out this winter yeah, when we heard about Paxton's back. Um, that's the biggest one for me. And then Hicks, mm -hmm. like Hicks might be ready to go in July, August. That's crazy. This guy had Tommy John. Yeah, he might not even miss a game after getting Tommy John. That's definitely <laughs> yeah. never happened before. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they tell me Sevy was coming back faster too. <laughs> we gotta wait a little bit. That. Only one, no matter what happens. Even if we start like next year, like wait, he probably wouldn't even be ready. We gotta wait a little for, for Sevy, but kid, poor kid. He yeah, just, John Carlo. John Carlo, good man. I hope I hope he's a hundred percent healthy and ready to rock. He could steal the show if we have some type of quick eighty game tournament. He's a guy that plays well in the heat. Miami guy. When right. he first came to the Bronx, he kind of struggled in the beginning because it was cold, and then he, he heated up when the warmer months. Hey, John Carlo could steal the show. He could be the MVP of 2020 if we put some type of season together. So that's let's a see great point, judge. honestly, because he hits homers in bunches. Like he could he could literally put up a 30 and 80 easily. Yeah, he, he could get he could get hot like we've seen him get hot, where he's hitting a home run every day and and he steals the show. And Judge, I feel like it sucks because Judge is just like huge massive name and figure and everybody knows him and with this rib it's like the the weirdest injury it's like this lingering thing he's been resting for how many months now and they're saying it's still not healed um mm -hmm. people got at me because when he when they first came out with it i was like just fix it get the surgery now and people mm -hmm. are like no you don't get yeah, surgery getting, on your first I've rib and i was like okay okay okay, okay. You know, but no, I think Judge, Judge is going to play. Judge is going to be a competitor, and he's going to show up when it's time to play. He's just got to get cleared, and I think they're working him back. Yeah, I don't know if he'll actually be ready for the time. I have a feeling he might not be ready if they were to start early July, but it might be soon. I don't know. It's just a tough thing to gauge right now. I mean, Cashman said summertime. That's so big. Like, what does that even mean? I said, I said to uh, Dan Rourke, shout out Dan. Um, I'm sure you guys know, know Dan from YouTube and Yankees yeah, he Twitter. He's a huge Judge fan. About it. And I said, summertime for me starts next Friday. Memorial Day weekend kicks off the summer for me. That's big. Summertime for other people is when uh, high school gets out. Summertime for other people is, yeah. I don't know, 4th of July. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so even it's it's big, but. Um, like before Labor Day, if you want to get technical with it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a gray area. But what are you going to do? We just got to see what happens. Hopefully we play and he's good. Yeah, I think Judge will be all right. He'll figure it out. He's just got to get cleared. Hicks is going to be good. Paxton's going to be good. John Carl is going to be good. Here's the thing, um, before we move on to the next thing, 
for what they're proposing this year, we were supposed to go to the 26 man roster. Now they're proposing a 30 man roster. So even right. if judge isn't ready, we got guys mm -hmm. and you were down at spring training. We, we got guys like this Roselle Herrera guy that might make the team now because it's an expanded roster. I was thinking when about him when they, when they were in set 30. He was one of the first guys I thought about potentially. Utility guy, if there's extra space on the roster, why wouldn't he make a 30-man roster, especially if Judge isn't ready to go? Um, mm -hmm. you, you've, got, you've got Giancarlo now that can play in the outfield. Obviously, Talkman, Gardy, Clint. Like, I, I'm not too worried if Judge isn't ready to play in July, August. Because how sick would it be if we're crushing this tournament and then we get an Aaron Judge injection in September? And then it's like, okay, yeah. no one's stopping the Yankees from taking this little tournament. Like, they're, they're the strongest team. No one can compete with them. The rest of the league might just lay down. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think, I think we're destined for Yankees Dodgers if we see baseball. Like, it, this is the year it has to happen. Like, Dodgers have it, Yankees have it. Like, this has to be it. But who knows what could happen in a short season like that? Like, some random team, like the Padres, maybe, I'll use them as an example, could be like the 14th seed and ends up like getting yeah, hot. Look at what we saw last year with the Nationals. The Nationals started off 19 and 31. They needed the full season to figure it out, to get a full head of steam and roll right into the postseason. And the Brewers had them beat. Like <laughs> they were almost out of the wild yeah. card, but all it takes is a little bit of momentum. And yeah, you said it like a random team like the Padres or who knows. Who could be the dark horse this year? I don't know. Maybe like the Mets somehow put it together this like year. Sox, and like anyone reds, like anyone random, like anyone can put it together for a, a couple months. And then with a 14 team playoff that puts half the field in, like you really don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see, man. If they can figure it out, which I think they will, it's going to be fun. It's history, it's sports history, it's American history, it's world history, it's something we've never seen. Yeah, I'm down for it. even without fans, as weird as it's going to be. Like, at first, I was like, how can you play without fans? But now I'm like, I'm starting for baseball. I don't care, even if there's no fans. <laughs> I just want to watch something. <laughs> I really turned on that one pretty quickly. We don't have that right now, and it's crazy no, to think man, that we've, no. we've gone this I long without those it. those interactions at the stadium, too. I know you miss yeah. those, too, because you're huge on that. And it was me and Bobby loved meeting new people at the stadium, oh, too. Oh, we love it. It's awesome. Meeting yeah. new people, it's great. You, you know – you go to a game with a friend and you and you both have a passion for the Yankees and you meet people who also share the exact same passion that you do and are as crazy about it as we are and as you are too, Keith. And it's amazing. Yankee fans, in my opinion, are some of the greatest fans. And I'm not – and, yeah, I may sound biased because, let's face it, we, we got all it. are Yankees That's fans. fine. I agree. But, <laughs> listen, there's nothing like it. The Yankees Twitter is – is. I'm just going to tell you something. There is nothing like it because I'm a diehard Patriots fan and I have a Patriots Twitter and it's nothing compared to what Yankees Yeah, Twitter I know, is. man. Uh, I'm a Nets fan and there's Nets Twitter. It's like this small microcosm yeah, right? of fans. Yeah, like Yankees Jets Twitter is a beast. The same way. Like, it's just not there compared to like Yankees Twitter. <laughs> Yankees Twitter is, is a beast and Yankees Twitter IRL, I started throwing that out. Last year, like Yankees Twitter in real life, just tweeting out, hey, I'm at the game or I'm at Billy's. And I got to meet so many people from Yankees Twitter. Like our parents didn't have that growing up. They didn't have an online community where they show up to 161st Street and now they can put faces to these Twitter accounts and they can, you know, meet this person that they've been sharing sports dialogue with. And I love that. The common denominator for all of us is that we're Yankee fans. I've made a bunch of friends. I've made a bunch of acquaintances. I've, you know, my followers have grown in the last couple of years just because I'm at the game all the time because I'm meeting different people. I'm tweeting about the, the Yankees and uh, it's, it's amazing. And it sucks that we're missing baseball right now, but I, I'll guarantee you this when we do get Yankee stadium back, when we do get, even when we just get these games back, the energy is going to be ridiculous. And you can, you can bet your ass the Yankee fans are going to lead the way. The Yankees Twitter is going to be all over whatever happens. I, I really think we're, we're strong like that. And uh, I, I love meeting more people and seeing it grow. I, I tell anyone, right, and it sucks that we didn't get this season, but I tell anyone that's a Yankee fan that kind of fell off, I say get a Twitter. If you, if you have a little bit of interest in the Yankees and you fell off, your, your favorite Yankee team was 
you know, 98, 99, 2000, and you kind of fell off since then, if you want to get back into it and follow the Yankees, make a Twitter, tweet a couple things about the Yankees, use hashtag Yankee Twitter, and you'll be able to find the right people to follow and talk to and get into the conversation with. Yeah, exactly. It, it, you can build really quickly through Yankees Twitter. I've been doing it also. And that's like made up, my, majority of my followers are Yankees fans by a wide margin. Like I pulled it, I pulled it before and it's like, it was like 90% Yankees, like 10% other was like yesterday. I was just curious. I'm like, how many percent? Like 88 to 12. I was like, all right, I had a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's similar because anytime I tweet about the Cowboys, anytime I do any Cowboys stuff, I get straight hate. <laughs> I mean, now I think people know, but. <laughs> In the last, like, oh. two years, people were like – I mean, I still get a couple, but people are like, oh, my God, you're a Yankee fan and a Cowboy fan? Oh, I thought I liked this guy until I saw that Cowboys jersey. I'm like, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> get over it. Bro, I get the same thing with the Patriots. I'll get – I'll tweet about the Yankees, and then that Friday, on Sunday, I'm tweeting about the Patriots because I go crazy with football. Football's my number one game. And I'll get somebody to be like, bro, you're a Patriots okay. fan too. I'm like, yeah, they go, how is that possible? I'm just like, it's just the way it is. You know, I love both teams. They're like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm doing it. So it's it's crazy. already done. It's already yeah, done. Right? My, my fiance is a Yankee fan, Patriots fan. There we go. And, and Sunday comes, she's got her Brady jersey on her Patriots stuff. As soon as that's over, she's back to the Yankee stuff. And it, there's a lot of people that have different football teams. I want to say that majority of Yankee fans seem to be Giants fans and that's mm -hmm. probably why you get the hate for the Patriots who they obviously beat in the Super Bowl twice so why would they hate the Patriots and then the Cowboys who they haven't beat in three years so I understand why they hate the Cowboys <laughs> <laughs> and then Jets is just the crosstown rival so that comes with the territory so yeah, and, I, and I hate how people try to say that like Jets fans are supposed to be Mets fans there's a lot of Yankee fans that are Jets fans and not not Mets mm -hmm. fans I've met a lot of them, and I've made some good friends that are Yankees-Jets. It's a great combo, so I love it. But it's not conventional, but it's cool. Yeah. So, uh, Jules, should we uh, transition to the football questions? Do you have any more baseball? Um, yeah, I think I have one more baseball, okay. and then we can get to football. Yep. So, what was, two, two of them, actually, and I think Bobby can get help with this one, too. Yeah. Ballpark that you've been uh, waiting for this one. I, mean, I have seen 13 MLB ballparks. My favorite ballpark is SunTrust Park, which I think they're calling the Truist State, Park right? now in Atlanta, the Atlanta Braves place. The, the Braves place is what they should model every stadium built in Major League Baseball moving forward. There are so many little things in this brand new place that will blow your mind. You can have 20 different experiences in this place. And then the outside of the Brave Stadium, there's a barbecue joint. There's bars. If you're a diehard Braves fan, when I went there, I'm not obviously not a diehard Braves fan, but if you're a diehard Braves fan, like we're diehard Yankees fans, and you grew up watching those 90, 90s Braves teams, and now you're in your 20s, 30s, you can afford to get an apartment, they have luxury apartments right outside the stadium where you can literally hear the whole game from your apartment. So if you're a Braves fan, that's a no brainer. You can live in this little village area right outside the stadium and walk to the games. You walk out of your apartment. There's this whole row of stuff going on, like this like festival row of restaurants and bars and people coming together. And it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I love, I love that park, but my second favorite park just for the the view and the game day atmosphere is pnc park in pittsburgh that's a good one i, I went there a while ago it's yeah i just love how it's across the river you walk over the yellow bridge you can see uh heinz field where the steelers play you see pnc park you walk up they got the street fair going on they got the saxophone man on the bridge they got guys playing the drums they're giving away stuff the tickets there are cheap they got McFadden's attached to the stadium, like right outside the stadium, similar to the Mets. But there's other bars out there, depending on where you want to go. Uh, 412 does it right, man. I, I really like um, the Braves Stadium. I really like Pittsburgh Stadium. But, I mean, I've been to Dodger Stadium. I've been, um, I've been to Marlins Park. I obviously have been to um, 
the Mets place. I've been to the Phillies, Citizens Bank Park. I don't even know if I can name all of them. I've been to Wrigley. Wrigley, don't let me forget Wrigley. Wrigley is an amazing place to see a game. And because Theo has built Theo World, the whole outside of Wrigleyville, which was already great, now it's got some new additions to it. You can go and uh, see a game there and stay there all day. Like, go eat breakfast, see, like, a 1 o'clock game, and then go to the bars after, party all the way through the night. It's awesome. Yep. I um, I was able to go to Wrigley Field um, in 2017. I took a baseball trip with my brother and his friends, and they went to Chicago. They go, yeah, Bobby, come along with me. I was like, all right, you know what? Let's do it. So we went to the White Sox State. Uh, I forgot what their, their stadium's called. But guaranteed, guaranteed rate field. Guaranteed low rate field now. Yeah. It used to be U.S. Cellular and Comiskey. Um, I've been there a few times too. Yeah. And literally the tickets are dirt cheap. I sat in uh, left field, first row. Melky Cabrera was playing left field that day. I literally, where my seats, I could literally put my arm over the railing and touch the, the uh, ground. It was awesome. It was amazing. But there is nothing like uh, Wrigley, Wrigley Field. It is historic. It's amazing. Everything about it was awesome. The fan base in Chicago is crazy for the Cubs. Yeah. They've been through all that stuff over 100 years without winning. They win a championship. I got um, – when you went, did were you able to go into where they had the uh, World Series trophy in the ring? I didn't take a tour. I've never taken a tour. So I, I don't think I've seen uh, the World Series. Oh, actually, I haven't. I don't think I've been. No, they won the World Series in 2016, right? Yeah, so I've been there since. But I, I haven't seen where they keep that at, no. So they did that, and they actually, what was really cool, and they did this for Fenway, too, a, a really long time ago when I went to Fenway. They actually allowed you to – hold take a picture with the trophy and wear a replica ring like it was actually a real one they're like if you want to wear it and i'm just looking at it and i'm just like this is awesome this is crazy and and the fans there are are really really nice people and if you went the one thing um that i was talking to julian about the other day at wrigley field they had i wanted to go sit in the seats where steve bartman sat yeah (laughs) <laughs> so I went over there and I asked somebody and he's like, all right, don't bring up that name here. I'm like, but I thought you guys got over it. He goes, no, we're not over it. <laughs> no, they're not over it. They never forgot. They've moved on now because they got that ring, but like, they don't, there's like, that stuff is not a joke. <laughs> like, no, it's not no. a joke. Not like, a they take it dead I serious. Asked, he was pissed. He's like, why are you, are, do you think this is funny? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just asking. He's like, well, don't ask again. And then, like, someone actually was nice. He's like, oh, it's over there. And uh, somebody – and then, literally, while I'm watching the game, my brother's friend goes, you really had to ask that? I'm like, what? I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they knew you were – did you have any Yankee stuff on? Did you have – No, a- I didn't. I thought about it. I actually bought a – um, the team store had a, like, cartoon goat. And it said, I ain't afraid of no goat. So I bought that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I had to get this. It was either that or I was going to buy – I'm a really, really big fan of Chris Bryant. I was going to buy a shirt that of Chris Bryant because every uh, baseball stadium I go to, what I want to do is buy – except the Red Sox, I refuse to wear that shit. Um, <laughs> I go – I buy a player who I like. Like when my brother went to uh, Toronto, he got me at the time Troy Tulowitzki shirt. And – he went to PNC, but at the time, I didn't want anybody on the team's uh, shirt. Yeah. But the next time is – well, I'm moving to Florida. They're coming down to Tampa. So, with the Rays, I don't know if I'll do that one, but maybe for the uh, Marlins, I'll figure something out. But, but I just – to me, there's nothing like Wrigley Field, bro, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm glad I, I didn't forget to leave that. Like, I, if I would have forgot to mention Wrigley, that would have been – foolish of me I, I was there when the Yankees I was played to start with actually yeah I mean it, it's not my favorite because I have been there I've been to like six different games there um I have some buddies that are connected from from the Cubs like one of my best friends is a uh, on-air host for the Cubs so like I, when I go to Chicago it's a guaranteed you know ticket to the game we're going to see the game but yeah Wrigley is, awesome. is ridiculous 
My, I actually do. I do like the PNC answer though, because that's actually my favorite park. I've been to sixteen of them, and I was only fifteen, so I couldn't see like that nightlife stuff you were talking about. But yeah. the atmosphere, like I, I remember all the bridges and like walking into the game and all that. And what I actually do is I collect baseballs from each stadium I go to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can get a hold, or you you buy a baseball in the stadium, you're saying. Yeah. What I okay, do I was gonna say, if you can get a hold of a baseball in every stadium, that's. That's extremely lucky. You got to go to a batting practice and try and snag one. But, yeah, that's Oh, cool, yeah, man. no, it's not – no, not not one of those, like, you know, like the team ball. Like, I'll buy a Blue Jays ball, for example, on that one. If you ever get – I mean, we were supposed to have uh, two games in Pittsburgh in June this year with Interleague, and I was thinking of going back. The thing about Pittsburgh, like I said, is you can go there, you can, you can party throughout the day and night. They keep the bars open till 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning, oh, something wow. like that. Yeah, so it's just like it's Man. a it's an all day long like Saturday into Sunday. I went to I went to a Saturday day game. I went to a Sunday day game, and we were partying the whole time. That's awesome! I can't wait. That's what I miss too. Traveling the ballparks. I was yeah. So we'll uh, switch up to football. So Keith, I know you're diehard Cowboys, and I'll tell you, man, I love I I love seeing fans of their teams. You know that they don't hide it. I love that you love the Cowboys. Um, so I got a few questions for you. So how do you think the Cowboys free agency this year, in your opinion? I mean, I think we did all right. I, I knew – what I knew was this. I knew that we weren't going to pay Byron Jones. So once that chip fell um, and we didn't hand him that money, I was interested to see what our coaching staff would do. Now, Mike McCarthy is the first free agent that we brought in big move like needed to needed to make a move like that to start the after Jason Garrett era and I I was like so distraught and so disgusted with the way that the season ended with the Eagles and I don't even want to talk about it I was I was this close to like throwing some of my Cowboys stuff away I have a friend that like put his Cowboys stuff up on on eBay like for for <laughs> Dallas Cowboys fans to go for us to go eight and eight which we hate the words eight and eight for us to go eight and eight after people were predicting us to be in the Super Bowl in the beginning of the season, like USA Today predicted Chiefs Cowboys, we start off three and zero. ESPN's like the Cowboys are looking like a Super Bowl contender. I knew it was fool's gold, but I didn't think we were gonna go eight and eight. We 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 just fell so hard. Um, Julian, you'll, yeah, you'll we, love this. We were at that. I, I knew when we when we lost to the Jets, I knew it was over. I was like, oh no, we, <laughs> we were at that game too. That was so epic. I heard on your, I heard on uh, on the NFL um, release podcast that you guys did that you were at that game for your birthday, and I'm like, I was happy for you because I had a, a bunch of friends that are Jets fans, and they were all like, they were snapping me and sending me texts <laughs> and stuff, and I was just, I was like, this, like this is embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> I went to one of my friend's house who's a Jets fan, and you Jets fans are the worst because. You think you're going to lose the whole game, but as soon as there's that, like, little bit of hope that, like, wait, we might – like, they get all pumped. So, I had to deal with this, and we <laughs> yeah, lost that game, and exactly. I knew I knew we weren't going to do anything. We got to take our windows. We don't have that many of them. So, whenever we get <laughs> – whenever, whenever we get the slightest bit of hope, I'm all in. <laughs> you get, like – you guys get bigger and bigger. As the game goes on and you get closer to a win, it's like the Jets fans start coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was – Die hard. I've watched all I've watched all this crap over the last ten years, but I'll be I'll I'll be a little extra once we're actually good. You know what's up. Hopefully this year we'll that see. That was the Jets' first win. Yeah. So for yeah. us, I was I was yeah. devastated, man. I was like, how did we get so bad with the my first birthday. win of the season? Perfect situation for us, but it was. I mean, look. I mean, Darnold was injured for some of the games. At least, like, we weren't fully healthy when we were winless. So it wasn't as bad as like people were making out to be. Like, we could have had one or two dubs if Darnold was healthy. Went probably. down early. You got yeah. You. I mean, that first game to the Bills that you guys oh, lost at home. That was de that was devastating. I was at that one too, and that was just like so destroyed. I couldn't believe that. I was like, this is I'm just. And my Gotta friends, win like, those. No, we're gonna lose, right? I'm like, nah, we're not losing this game, and we end up <laughs> losing. I'm just like, really? <laughs> this really happened. We just let job. He turned the ball over four times. We were up like seventeen nothing. I'm like sixteen nothing. Like it's it's a nightmare. But what are you gonna do? Going to this season, you know, can't let that happen this year. Those close games, you got to win. Everybody sees, and that's that's something with the Cowboys, right? A lot of the Cowboys' losses were games we should have won or games where it's like 
Dak misses a wide open receiver or Amari Cooper drops the ball or we missed a field goal. And we, we end like up losing that. by like four points or something. You can't lose games like that in the NFL. That's the difference between making the playoffs and not. 100%, especially when you go 8-8 eight and eight and it's that close. And I've been through it before. It sucks. Like, you got to you gotta be clean. You got to play the games properly. The smallest thing can come back to get you. And we start with the Bills again this year. Now we're going to Buffalo. So we'll get our chance to get revenge. We'll see. If we play the game, Scott Willing also. Oh, oh, please. So uh, uh, let's hope that we, everything's good with the NFL. Yeah, I think they're going to do everything in their power to make that happen. And circling back to the question you asked, I like – that McCarthy brought in some former head coaches like Joe Philbin. Um, we've got some other guys on this staff. I got to go look through the names, but every hire that I was seeing McCarthy make is somebody that either had head coaching experience or a lot of experience in the NFL. So for free agency, I love the coaching staff. And then we brought in some veterans, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Don Terry Poe, um, Gerald McCoy. Now these guys' best days are behind them, but We've got some young guys on our team where if you put veteran leadership, new veteran coaching with that, like it, it should be good. We got Legatron. Um, Zerline has missed some kicks in the last couple of years, but I, I know he's still got it. So I'm looking forward to this season. I think the Cowboys, I don't, I'm not one of those Cowboys fans that thinks the Cowboys are going to go uh, 14 and two or something like that's ridiculous. Not, not a first year head coach, not his first year in Dallas. Like I think we're, I think we're looking at a solid like 10 and six season and going to the playoffs because we do have that right mix of talent, experience, better coaching. Uh, we, you know, we, we did what we could with Jason Garrett, who was the ultimate clapper, non-motivator. <laughs> you know, now we've got some guys that, that, that should be able to figure it out. Go ahead. Bro, I am not a fan of Jason Garrett. The guy is the pure definition of I think he's a decent play caller, but listen, you guys are down three touchdowns, and he's clapping away after Dak throws an interception. <laughs> oh, let's go! At, no, it, it, it just, I'm not even a Cowboys fan. I have nothing against Cowboys. I'm not a fan. It pisses me off, and they're getting their asses kicked, and he's clapping away. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? I think that Jerry Jones kept him yeah. way too long. I think that. You know what? It was it was time way past his time bringing McCarthy in. You know what? He he's a good head coach. I know his uh la his tenure in Green Bay after winning a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers def coaching him is not easy. And we all know that. And ask Lafleur, who definitely has a easy coaching Aaron Rodgers. But Dak is not Aaron Rodgers. He's not going to be like that. It's it's a lot, and you're going to see this too. It's a lot better. And Mike McCarthy's not going to be clapping away. He's going to be pissed. <laughs> Mike McCarthy's passionate. I can't, and he gets pissed really. And uh, you know what? All these guys you said, I forgot you guys had done Tari Poe and Jared McCoy. That's how far free agency has been for me. Look at those two guys up the middle for your defense. Your defense got really, really good. And then Alden, am I right, Jules? Yes. Alden Smith he's, is coming, too. We'll see what happens If he could get reinstated, yeah. Let's and see what, he, let's you know see what, what he's got. Here's the thing. When you, guys lost, you, you guys lost Byron Jones. Trust me, you didn't fall into that trap. Keith, forgive me if you disagree with me. I didn't think Byron Jones was that good. And he got way over. Dude, I, I watched his whole career. I didn't think he was that good. I've seen him get toasted. I've seen him get – but now, don't get me wrong. He's a freak athlete, and he was the best probably DB on our team. I didn't think he was worth that kind of money. It, it's just the way the market goes, right? The Dolphins needed a corner. They had the money to spend. He ends up commanding highest corner in the league money. But I, I knew Dallas wasn't going to re-up him, especially because we paid Zeke last year. I knew we were going to pay Amari Cooper after giving up a first-round pick for him. And the number one thing ESPN talks about in the NFL every week when are they going to pay Dak Prescott? We still have to figure out how to pay Dak Prescott. And literally, I'm glad you said that because that when I lead to my next question, how much do you think Dak is uh, – do you agree with me on this? Because Julian and I have said this, we both agree, 
is that Dak Prescott is definitely not worth the forty mil a year he's asking for. That's just asinine. I mean, the only guy worth that forty mil is Patrick Mahomes. Yep. Like mm-hmm. the only, and, and you you can say that because they drafted up or they moved up in the draft to get him. He comes out in his rookie year, learns. He comes out, uh, uh, sits his whole rookie year, but then comes out in his second year and completely takes the Chiefs over. And it's like he's he's highlight uh, he's a highlight machine, highlight real plays after highlight real plays. He was this close to getting to the Super Bowl in that sophomore season. Then he does it in the third year, and he's the MVP. So that guy commands that kind of money. Dak. Now don't get me wrong. Dak has forty wins in four years. Dak had his best statistical season of his career last year. They finally did what they had to do, right? Dak was throwing the ball to Cole Beasley, Bryce Butler. Uh, (laughs) I can't even name some of the receivers that we had out there for Dak. Alan Hearns. We just just didn't have the weapons for him. So they put the weapons around him. Well, yeah, uh, we had, like, Julius Randle running the ball or something. <laughs> we just didn't have that. Like, now, now he has all of the weapons. I don't think he's worth $40 million. I think he's around that $35 million, and I think they have an offer out there around $35 million, but he's looking for upwards to, like, 37 38 I think with the tag that's on him, gonna command like 35 he might just play on that tag so there's a lot to be seen I know that it's a tough time for Dak and I want to say that I'm a huge Dak fan and supporter I wear his jersey when people ask me are you really a Dak fan I'm like I am that guy's gone through a lot in his life this past Sunday was Mother's Day and it was his brother's birthday and his brother passed the the night of the draft so like this guy's gone through a lot he lost his mom in college he lost his brother the night of the draft we draft CD Lamb and it's supposed to be a good time for Dallas Cowboys fans and for Dak to be like, wow, look at my third receiver, the best receiver in the draft. His 31-year-old brother dies. He's got to mourn his brother on Mother's Day. He's got to mourn his mother on Mother's Day. Like, he's got a lot going on. And I think if Jerry and the Cowboys can figure out how to pay him or maybe even not pay him, I think Dak is going to come into this season regardless and lead this team, and he's going to have a great year. How can you not? You, you've got – You've got three ridiculous receivers. You got a good offensive line, and you got one of the best running backs in the league. Like, just go out there and, and don't do too much. Um, play your game, run the ball when you need to run the ball, and just hit the, the throws that you need to make when they're there. And, and we're going to win games. They're going to figure out the defense. We got better coaches. Um, I just I don't want to see a holdout. We had the fiasco last year with Zeke and Cabo, and it, it didn't help us. Zeke came back, and he didn't do anything. And it's like, we just gave this guy $100 million. He was chilling in Mexico. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know what? I Dak has been through hell. He really has. And you know what? He works hard. He, does, he works with what's around him. In my opinion, you know what? Asking for $40 million, And he said that he can't support his family on $30 million a year, which I thought was pretty comical. But – I, I agree with you know what the offer they have now is five for 175 30 million 35 million a year I think you know what I think that's fair I think the, knowing Jerry Jones I feel like you know what he'll probably give him an, a deal probably getting 36 I think that's where they'll come he'll give him another offer of 36 million but um I'm gonna ask you this who is your favorite cowboy of the past and of the present uh, I'm a, I'm a big quarterback guy. I played quarterback in college, high school. Um, I just understand how much the quarterback position means for the game. Growing up, I was a Troy Aikman fan. I still am. I still wear the number eight Troy Aikman jersey. That's my all-time favorite Dallas Cowboy. Um, and then currently, I like Zeke. But, I, but I'm also, like I said, I'm a big Dak guy. And Dak, you know, I want to see him get paid. I, I want to mention that, like, you know, Dak – he said that, you know, 30 million comment, I guess, but Dak has got a sleep number contract. He's got Dan and yogurt. He's got yeah. chunky soup. Like exactly. because he's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, he he's making millions that other quarterbacks are not going to make. Like he's make he's got money coming from endorsement deals because he's the face of the Dallas Cowboys. So 
I mean, I hope they, they figure out how to pay him. Um, but Dak is my favorite. Like, I, I will say this is why Dak is my favorite player right now. When we signed Tony Romo to $100 million, I remember thinking, man, I'm going to be 30-something. <laughs> I'm going to be 30-something until uh, before we get rid of Romo. Like, I was, like, in college when we, when we had Romo. I'm like, I'm going to be an old man uh, with Romo as my quarterback. And I couldn't stand watching Romo play quarterback because one minute it's this miraculous play, Houdini play, and the next it's an interception to lose the game. And I'm like, I can't. I can't, it's got it like, it's, it's either feast or famine with the guy or like some games he's not there. Other games he's miraculous. Um, I know that he, he has it all upstairs. He knows the game very well, but he tried to force a lot of passes. And um, we had a lot of heartbreak with Romo attached to it from fumbling, a, fumbling an extra point um, hold to you guys know, you guys know the rest. So Dak saves us from that. Dak gets drafted in the fourth round. Uh, gets a back injury in Seattle that year in the preseason, and this kid was already lighting it up, and he never gave that job back. So I, I like I like uh, Troy Aikman all-time Dak right now. I'm a quarterback guy. Uh, yeah, so I'll also ask you, were you a fan of Dez? Were you a Dez guy too? Now, I was a big fan of Dez. I had the Dez jersey, throw you up say, the yeah, X, you, go. you know. But, I mean, da uh, Dez got paid too. We um Des got paid and and he got paid. He, I think they tagged him and he got paid like the day before, like July fifteenth is the date, and he ended up getting paid like July fourteenth or like right around that time. But uh, like the thing about about Des, if you guys ever get the chance, I don't know if you will. There's this show on Amazon Prime. It's like a hard knock style show. They have the Panthers, they have the Cowboys, and I think one other NFL team. But if you watch that. Um, it's called All or Nothing, a season with the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. You watch that, you get to see, like, the personality that De uh, that Dez had. It wasn't healthy for the Dez team. would say, nobody could guard me, nobody could cover me. And, you know, he was good, but his skills started to deteriorate a little bit, and his mouth didn't deteriorate at all. Like, he still had this arrogance and this, like, way about him, but he wasn't um, producing on the field. So I was glad when we cut ties with him. I was glad when um, we moved on from Dez. There was some – flirting going on about Dez coming back I'm sure you guys remember when he signed with the Saints and uh then he tore his Achilles and oh, you know in the in the last couple of weeks they showed I think Dez was catching passes from Dak but uh I'm, I'm glad with the way that Dez's time ended he was a great steal for us in the draft I remember when we got him in the draft I was so excited and he brought electricity to the Dallas Cowboys 88 club it was a great cowboy but I think he's done I think his career is done and and, and I'm not mad about how his time in Dallas ended so I'll, you know what? The 88 club added another uh, member to the club, and that's C.D. Lamb. So my last question for you with Dallas. So did you like how they did in the draft, especially with their first uh, overall pick? I, this was the, I can't think of the last draft. Maybe Dez, when Dez got drafted in 2010, was exciting like this. Maybe it's been 10 years. I can't think of a draft that I was this pleased, this excited, and this happy for. I'm watching in the draft with everyone on Twitter and as soon as Henry Ruggs the third gets drafted I'm looking at the receivers and I'm like I'm like don't let don't let I think he went at 11 so in my head I'm like don't let Jerry Judy or CD Lamb fall to the Cowboys and I had preferred CD Lamb and when I saw the Broncos took Judy I knew the need for each team in there and I'm like I didn't want to say it but I was just waiting and it happened. C.D. Lamb falls to the Cowboys. I'm like, no way did the league let this happen. We need a third receiver. Like, Randall Cobb was our third receiver. We let him go in, in free agency. He's with the Texans now. Yeah, that's a huge upgrade right there. Yeah, you, you get C.D. Right Lamb now. as your third receiver with Michael Gallup and, and uh, Amari Cooper. And then we went on to get uh, the, the um, Stefan Diggs brother out of – uh, Alabama, Alabama in the second round and then we got we got the the so Travis Frederick um Travis Frederick has uh what's what's the get the disease that he has our center but he just retired the center coming out of his same school Wisconsin one of the best be his his heir so I, I was very pleased we got some DBs we got some ed edge rushers as well um and then I, I went to school at James Madison University and our last pick was 
uh, quarterback Ben DiNucci from James Madison University, and I played I played football at James Madison University. So I was like, this was the best draft I've ever seen. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I remember talking to you before the draft, saying, "No way, CD falls." But if you have to, but if he's there, you have to take it. It ends up happening. I remember tweeting yeah. you that. It was so funny how that worked yeah. out. Because I, I I was seeing all the talk, and people had us take in. Uh, one of the kids from LSU, either Pat Queen or the uh, Kavon Chasten or yeah. one of those guys. And that's fine. But there was an article that went out and I, I, I tweeted it and you and I talked about it. I was like, people are saying CD Lamb could fall at 17. And everybody was telling me, no, there's no way. There's no way. No. I didn't think it would really happen. I was ready to go defense. And, uh, Man, what a night. I'll never forget that night. I was on I was on a on a live podcast and they were messing around with me because there's a delay between like ESPN, NFL network and the alerts. And we're streaming and they knew for about a good 15 seconds before me and then when it happened I just was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, I'm telling you, I'm glad you guys got your guys A+ cuz you guys did tremendous Every need you had, you filled with amazing players. Yeah. And yeah. arguably, this receiving class, to me, the best was Jerry Judy. But when I saw the combine with C.D. Lamb, C.D. Lamb made this ridiculous catch. And I'm At just like, this guy's going to be a stud. He comes to you guys. He wears 88. It's, I think it's fate. He's going to be a fan favorite. He's – He's got quickness. He can catch. He makes all the hard catches. It's you guys got a stud receiver. You receive Amari Cooper now, CD Lamb. Everything's starting to fall into place for you guys. All the weapons are there for Dak to succeed. And it's all you're this year. I think you guys are going to be very pleased yeah, with what you got. Uh, that catch he made in the combine where he was like going out of bounds, like the body yep, control the that showed to go up and make. Everybody yep. saw that catch, and that was, a, that was a catch where people were saying, like, okay, this might be the number one receiver in the draft. On top of what I, what I like most about him is his run after catch. The NFL, yes. the NFL yes. is a yep. league with, with, with yak. Yards after catch matters because a lot of these guys, like, it's about who can, who can, like, who can take that slant to the house, who can catch that. Mm -hmm that over the middle route and, and go the distance. And he's one of those guys that can do that. And that can change the whole field and that can change the game for the team. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of hype, but there's a lot of hype in Jerry world every single year. Um, and that's why I temper my expectations. I'm like, I'll take 10 and six, <laughs> two more wins than last year. And it's the NFL. <laughs> you never know any given Sunday and every year, there's a team that we're not thinking about. Like, like, I really think, like, a team like the Broncos all of a sudden can figure it out. There's a lot of teams that can all of a sudden put it together that you weren't expecting to put it together like that. So, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be a, a fun time. And I pray that the season can happen. I don't expect Me it too. to happen well. with fans. But I, I, they, they released the schedule. Everyone is, is expecting September to go off the way it does. And football is different than any other sport because it owns a day of the week. Sunday yeah. comes. You know what everyone is doing. Even if they claim they don't like football, they're influenced by it somehow. But either, you know, they work at a restaurant or their boyfriend or girlfriend works at a restaurant. And that restaurant is hopping on Sundays because there's football. Like, we, we need that. We need that. Yeah. Absolutely. We really do. I couldn't agree more. Literally, we just need sports back. And football, I'll tell you this. Right now, we're, without baseball, it's killing all of us. And if somehow football gets pushed back, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, really. It's just – oh Yeah. Because literally after ba – because when baseball is over, what do we look forward to? Football. It's football. After baseball is over and the World Series is done, football. it's football every Sunday until February. And then after the Super Bowl, two weeks later – is pitchers and catchers report. So yep, that's why we're so in sync with baseball this, and football. That's why literally they're exactly so in sync. And let's just hope, you know what? The numbers are going down here in New Jersey. Thank God in New York, they're slowly going down. So hopefully things will get better. And if, and going back to baseball real quick, I know fans won't be in the stands, but you know what? Just give us something 
to talk about. Just give us that. Give us the game we love back. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I've, I've had a, a lot of thoughts during this time, and I'm such a sports person as far as my profession and my personal interest and my life. And I'm like, I tweeted something a while ago. I was like, do we make the sports or do the sports make us? Right. It's both. But like, I don't know what I'll do. I, I don't know what I'll do if we get to the fall and there's no NFL on Sundays. I don't know. Like, I just don't oh see that God, happening. That there's too much time. Just... I'm like, I'm not shit without sports, <laughs> honestly. Like, I don't have, I don't have anything else going on. <laughs> like, I, need, I feel I need better hearing you say this because, like, if some people are thinking I'm crazy, I, like, I can't survive without <laughs> sports. But, like, it's just tough, man. We're just so used to having it, and then they take it. And I think the sport almost makes us more than we make the sport yes, at this point. Exactly. Because what can we do without the sport? Yeah. Yeah, we're, you're getting a good look. If, if, if we make the sports or the sports make us, you know, we're trying to figure out every week, just like you guys, what are we going to talk about on the podcast? What yep. video content are we going to cover? What's, what news is breaking? It's like every single day just reaching it, just grasping at nothing. Yeah, we're, and, and they're really helping us out. Uh, we appreciate this, yes. and this is this Thank is relevant. So this is relevant content, though. The baseball stuff's starting to become real. Like we, yeah. we see a little something now. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there, and that's why I say I believe, and I'm being positive because when we first fell into this, I spiraled into the negativity, and I'm like, oh no, this is the worst. Like this is the worst thing. <laughs> this is all bad. I'm like, people are dying, that, and they canceled the sports. Period. No way. Let me tell you, that two-week period, like, when they canceled opening day was a dark, dark time for me. Yeah. Like, when we were yeah. supposed to go to camp in the yards, that was probably my low point. Like, when yeah. they camped, like, probably the first two weeks, I was like, oh, my God. Like, Dude, it's gotten I a little bit better and better as time's gone on. It's still tough, but, like, I'm getting more used to it because we have to. We did, uh, we did, like, the opening day online, opening day at home, and at least we had that. But as soon as that was over, it really started to sink, sink in, and then – the week after was supposed to be Yankee Stadium opening day, and that one was a gut punch right. because, because, like, going to Yankee Stadium for me and for you it and for a lot terrible. of us, like we talked about, it's like a family reunion. You get to see your Twitter friends. You get to see your fellow Yankee fans. Mm -hmm. There's some people that I literally only see at oh, Yankee man, Stadium. Oh, man, let me tell you, there's so, so many. Yeah, I mean, so. That's how it was going to be this year. Like, so, because, like, everyone's in different spots, and that's, like, the meeting spot. Like, no one's, like, we're not all close right. to each other. Like, sometimes that's the only spot everyone can go to. That's exactly what it is. It's the, it's the meetup spot. It's the only spot. People from the whole tri-state area, whether you get there by bus, train, drive yourself. Um, once we didn't have opening day, shout out to the Bleacher Creatures. The Bleacher Creatures in 203, I've been brought in as, like, an honorary member, and I've been able to meet Bleacher Creatures from – past, present, and even young ones that are going to be the future. And every opening day at Yankee Stadium, the Bleacher Creatures meet up and they say, Happy New Year. Yeah. We got robbed of that this year. And I, I was in the chat. Yeah. We have a chat. And I was talking to all of them. And, you know, we, we talk every day. We're just like, we're trying to, like, when can we get back? When can we put on our jerseys, put on our stuff, and, and get back together? We haven't seen each other in months. And it's like, wow, it just puts everything into perspective. Like, I have these friends only because we're diehard Yankee fans and we meet up in the Bronx every time there's a 705, 105 game. And without that, like, our relationships, we're like, what do we do? Like, we're just, we're just talking about nothing. There's so many. Um, I, can, I can relate to that so much. Like, the Twitter chat just aren't the same without baseball. Like, a lot of the people I've fallen out with just because I, I can't see them anymore. But, like, I still want to keep close and hopefully, like, they still think of me also. But, like, it's just a tough situation because we're drifting because we can't be together. Like, it's really your close friends, like, whoever you think is important to what you're doing. That's what I've been trying to focus on, like, just trying to make sure I'm in as good a spot as I can be. And then once like, everything's ready to go, I'm trying to be better than ever. That's all we could do, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's right. And uh, it's tough because Twitter, you know, like the common denominator on Twitter is that we're all Yankee fans. But without the Yankees, you start to see some divisions. You start to see some people mm -hmm. like being nasty or mean or, mm -hmm. or not nice or just like people are some, – some of the subject matter gets very just, like, off base. The base yeah, is the Yankees. Yankees Twitter after dark is not a fun place. That's no, a, it yeah. starts to get very sexual or reckless <laughs> or people talking shit about people. And I'm like, I'm not, I, I'm not here for all that. I'm yeah, here for – too much, like, man. Like, we're just trying to cover the game and, like, the baseball and all that and, like, football and all that. Exactly. It just gets too crazy sometimes. But without baseball, what, what's everyone supposed to do? I mean, you're seeing sides of people that you never thought you would see. 
I'll include, like, I never thought we would get to this point. Like, I've changed through this. We all yeah. have. Yeah, 100% correct. We all, we all have changed. We all have seen a side of ourselves that we didn't know we were going to tap into this year. This year was supposed to be crazy. I told people, I'm going to 50 games this year. This is going to be the year the Yankees win the World Series. We're going to have a parade, and I'm going to go to as many of the games this season as I can on the road to the 28th championship. Yep, I was – trying to do well not 50 because I can't do all that but like <laughs> I was gonna try to do like 20 plus into as much as I could like I was really excited too I was gonna be like yes we're gonna go to the world series I'm gonna go to my first world series game this is gonna be it baby I'm like this, this is the year we're gonna get everything going hopefully I'll get a baseball career like everything was I was like all right 2020 let's go and now it's just like uh yeah but we will we, we will get our games in we'll keep creating we'll keep pushing forward and then that's what I'm telling you when they do open Yankee Stadium can you imagine if the first time we can go back in the Yankee Stadium as fans is March or April 2021? That's going to be oh the hottest God, ticket in the world. Be, I've been thinking about be that, that too. I'm like, that first game, game when like, the fans are back, it's going to be like, like nothing we've ever oh yeah. received. It's going to be like, like, gonna, gonna be gonna be like, like, for like over 20 bucks for two years. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. I miss the smell of it, the sound of the train. I miss, like you said, random idiots that don't know where they're going or like the tourists, you know, the people that don't realize, like, I'm at Yankee Stadium every homestand. This is your one trip to Yankee Stadium in, in 10 years. Yeah, right? And I used to be like that when I lived further away. I, I, I used to be like that. And, you know, the, it, Yankee Stadium is a place. It's, it's a mix of all that. We'll, we'll get that back. It's not over. It's just, it's just on pause. It's on pause. Here's an interesting question, actually. I don't know if you know any information about this being by that area more. Is there any shot the bars could reopen at any point without fans in that area? Because I know they're bleeding because I was reading some stuff how they're yeah, really hurting. They are. They are hurting. I know. Uh, shout out to Joey, the owner of Billy's. Um, I know the people at the dugout. Uh, some of the people in Yankee Tavern, because that's where the bleacher creatures go. That's where the Christmas party is. It's tough. Uh, even uh, La Bodega, like the owner of La Bodega shut down for a little while because, like, that area is nothing. I mean, in the winter, it's it's dead. In the winter, it's dead. And I was yeah. going to the John Boy Media office this winter, so that was where I really got to see what it looked like in January, February. But then around March, they start to gear up. And now, without having that, like, there's – there's still the courthouse over there and some businesses over there, but it's completely shot, man. I haven't been there since March 17th. I drove in and yeah, of course those places are hurting. I'm sure like places like Billy's can probably do takeout food. Um, Yankee Tavern can probably do takeout food, but the business there is baseball. Yeah. The business there is baseball. And if there's no baseball being played, there's really no money coming in. Yeah. That's the problem. And I live, I'm familiar with that area too, because my grandparents are by there. I haven't been there. I think I went once to visit them. That's it. I haven't even been by the stadium probably since the end almost, but I've been, I've been to buy it, but in the exact area, last game we went to, he was with me too. ALCS game four, that horrible loss against A3 to the Astros. We just didn't have it that night. Missed, the, missed it by one day. We need to be there for game five, but what are you going to do? <laughs> I was there for game four. I had tickets for game five, but I didn't like the energy that I saw. That wasn't like game four was the night that one of that video went viral of the fan throwing a, a beer, like the Yankee fan that threw a beer at the Astros fan. Oh, yeah. Um, people were fighting. Some guy got in my face. And like, I'm the nicest guy. I talk to everybody. I'm cool with everybody. Some drunk guy got in my face. That was a Yankee fan. And I'm like, dude, I'm not fighting you in here. Like, like what would I look like getting thrown out of Yankee stadium or banned in, in Yankee stadium? I'm like, you're an idiot. Relax. Like we're losing, but like, like calm down. And yeah. The next, like, I didn't go to that next game. I think it was a Friday night maybe, or a Thursday night. I don't forget, but I had tickets. Thursday, on the day. I think. Yeah. yeah I, I, mean, I didn't go. Cause I didn't like that energy. And I was like, I will enjoy this game with my fiance at home in the comfort of my house without having to deal with all the, like, idiots and uh, everything else. And it worked out. Hicks hit that home run, sent us to game six. You know, it is what it is. But, yeah, we'll get, we'll get back. We, we'll, yeah, we'll return. We'll have to see what happens. But it's crazy that the last time I was really in that area, too. It's just, like, an area we're so used to. Now it's like a ghost town. It's like quarantine. It's like a death trap almost. It was, I think, a little better now. But, like, 
we're going to have to see, man. I just hope that if they can play without the fans and at least bring some of their local businesses back. Yeah, I made that joke when Barstool said that, you know, the games on without fans. I'm like, all right, I'll be in Billy's. Let's have a big ass party in Billy's while the Yankees play. Like we can watch it on TV in Billy's in our gear with beers mm-hmm. and stuff and like still get the yeah, fans. Yeah, we to go to the event too. That was the first thing that gave me a red flag actually when you guys canceled the event. That was the first thing that came to me that. actually. He was with me. He saw how pissed I was. I was like, shit, this might, this might be a big problem. I remember, man, that day uh, Jimmy came into the office and we were having some talks on Monday because we had just came back from spring training. We went to spring training like the last weekend of February. And then when we came back, we had some talks that Monday, Mar- uh, March 9th, rest in peace, Notorious B.I.G. I remember this is exactly. And then the 10th, I'm talking to John Boy, and he's like, yeah, he's like, things are starting to get canceled, dude. And, and I had set up the party at Billy's. So I text my boy, Joey, who's the owner. And I'm like, Joey, like, what what are you hearing, bro? What's the deal? And NYFC had a party to kick off their season that Friday, uh, which would have been March 13th. And they canceled their party. So I was talking to Joey, and he's like, we, we, we got to cancel the party on Saturday too. And I'm like, oh, no. And we talked for a little while, and it was the type of thing where it's like, this thing is going south, and no one in a month, two months, wants to have blood on their hands, or nobody wants to have, like, Nobody wants to have it on their hands that they threw a party on that Saturday and they got some people sick and, and people say, where were you at Saturday? And then say we had, we had over, we had over 150 RSVPs. I think we were like, I think we were close to like 300 RSVPs. Wow. Wow. So if you imagine, let's say a hundred of those people showed and 10 of those people got sick and they all said that they were at Billy's eating and drinking, whatever, it just wouldn't have looked good for John boy media. Wouldn't have looked good for Billy's as, a bar and a business. So we, we opted out and I'm glad we did. Cause I'm, I'm sure we uh, ended up sparing some people or saving some people from catching the coronavirus. Yeah, it was definitely the right decision. I was just saying that was the first time that was like, Oh shit, like this, that was the first thing that really got canceled. That I was like planning to do. That was like the, that was like the beginning for me. I was like, Oh boy. Oh. I, it's, it's just craziness how this all happened and it just, came together so quickly and I still can't believe it how you know things were taken away from us people lost family members due to this horrible virus it's I I I can't fathom how fast this happened it took away how we live our life and so some things may never be the same they won't be that's the problem and it's it's kind of hard for me personally to grasp because you know what, going back to what you said, Keith, about, you know, we all have changed. Yeah, we have. And we saw um, a part of ourselves that we never thought we'd see and everything. It's it's a dark time. But you know what, I feel like us coming together and talking about this stuff that we love and, and getting back to hopefully getting back to normal, our normal before this pre-coronavirus, hopefully at some point, will bring a smile to everyone's face when we can honor everybody who unfortunately lost their life to this and just get back to watching baseball, getting back to watching football. And like you said, if we can't be in the stadium, hell, Billy's, here we come. We'll Billy's we'll dug out, fo- whatever's open. Whatever's open, <laughs> I'll pay I'll pay $9 for Modelo's all day. I'll be, I'll be sick. <laughs> my debit card of mine will be maxed out, bro, man. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, like literally put my hands up, take my money. I'm down for whatever. Let's get back to, let's get back to business, boys. It'll, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. And I'll try and end with some positive energy that, you know, New Yorkers are resilient. New Yorkers are strong. The Yankees have been through 9-11 and helped bring people back together and give people, a, you know, something to watch and, something to really just rally around. And I see that happening again this summer. And I really do hope that around July 4th, we can see the Yankees come out and play. And it, it does pick people up. And this has changed the world. This has changed the country. But it's for the greater good. It sucks right now that we're missing things. It sucks that people have died and that we're still losing people. But the hope is that we come out better on the other side, that there is a vaccine soon, that we are better equipped to handle the next virus that comes mm-hmm. up. And we like reset through this time 
so that we can have a better tomorrow. And I, I think that better tomorrow is on the way for everyone and everything, sports included, uh, the city included, um, you know, everything. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be better. It's hard to see right now, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's May. We're, you know, we're a week away from Memorial Day weekend. They're reopening some things. Beaches, where I'm from in the Jersey Shore area, they announced will be open. So, like, we're, like we're starting to come back. Thank you. Guys. We'll see. But, um, Keith, thank you so much. And also, I want to say New York's definitely a big part of my family as well. My parents are New Yorkers. Um, my grandparents live in the city, so I, I'm definitely about it as well. I'm, not, I'm from Jersey, but New York's very personal to me, obviously. So that's good. And, Bobby, do you have anything you'd like to add before you let him go? Yeah. You know, Keith, thank you so much for coming on, bro. It means the world to us. We were really looking forward to interviewing you. It was great. And – you know, everything that is going on, the one positive with all of this is that we're all sticking together mm -hmm. and we're, we're talking, we're all doing our, each other's podcasts, listening to each other and supporting each other. Yep. There's a lot of people out there who are just extremely negative oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and all of us here just came together as, as a family. It's right. Mm -hmm. It really is. And and the support that everybody has shown each other through this time, we all could have panicked and everything, but you know what? We tried to keep our cool as much as possible and stuff like this, us talking to you, talking to Kyle last week. Yeah, it's been good. It's, it's been great. Definitely and, helping out. You know, for Julian and I, who basically see each other every day, you know, I, there's some people who I haven't seen and, you know, Julian and I are fortunate enough to be able to see each other and be doing these things. And yeah, it's, we just, we're extremely fortunate and Keith, man, you know, I met when I met you at um, house of Q, you know, I will tell you, you are one of the nicest guys I've ever, I have met in quite some time. I thank you for being so nice to us coming on and, you know, I just I can't wait for all this to get back and we could be talking face to face, shit, sh uh, shooting the shit at a table, drinking a few beers, and just having a fun time. And like at the House of Q, eating great food, meeting Michael K was awesome, having having food, beers, and just enjoying what we love baseball. You nailed it. That was great. Yeah, great, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad that I was able to meet you guys this year at House of Q for the Michael K show, and at least we got that, you know. We got yeah. that in. We were able to eat and drink and, and you know, watch a live show that we all love and enjoy. Um, I think we'll get back to this stuff and it'll be like we never left and it can be better than ever. So just keep working and keep doing what you're doing. And, and good people like us, we, we find other good people to work with and stay connected with and keep in touch with. And when we get the Yankees back and we're allowed to go to Yankee Stadium, we'll be having beers and we'll be saying, man, how crazy was that? Thank God we're back. Absolutely. Yeah, and I want to thank you as well, because before we even met, you were messaging me on Twitter. We were talking a lot of the winter meetings, like we started following each other and whatnot. Right. You were telling me a lot of great advice. And once I met you, it was like, oh, awesome. Now I can put a face in the name and all that. And it, it was really cool. And that we were really lucky. To see. It's crazy how lucky we were to even get that opportunity at House of Q, looking back and everything. And I'm really lucky I got to go to spring training, honestly, because after that, everything just collapsed. Same, man. Yeah. And like I said, uh, you know, keep working, man. I see myself and you guys and vice versa. We all do the same thing. We're fans of the same uh, team. We're, we're sports guys. We're, you know, making podcasts and creating content and using these platforms to maximize what we do. And uh, I always try and help, man, because I wouldn't be where I am if people didn't help me, if people didn't, you know, give me advice, if I didn't have some people to work with or lean on. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I've run into a lot of negative people. I've learned, I've learned through this that, you know, everyone isn't the nice guy. So, like, why don't you be the nice guy? Why don't you rise above and, and put out the energy that you want to get in return? And, and you'll know right away when someone doesn't match your energy. So, you guys keep working hard and keep going. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm listening to the pod. And I'm excited to see what you guys keep doing and what you do next. Thanks, bro. We really appreciate it. So Same with you. Keep doing that grind. John Boy Media. And we'll build this Yankees family together as always. Absolutely. Thanks again for having me, guys. Have a good night. You, you too, too, Keith. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. All right. So that was Keith McPearson from John Boy Media. That was a great video, great podcast. We're going to get audio and video of this. Um, we're going to do our handles quickly, and then we're going to get going because it's pretty lengthy right now. Yeah. Um, so GUT Sports Talk 2, it's Twitter and Instagram. 
Apple Podcasts and Spotify is GNT Sports Talk with the acronym, and that's also our YouTube channel. Yep, and my personal Twitter is btomps81. My personal Twitter is julianglardy one 